ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the lockup. <laughs> Episode eleven. I am your horse. Horse. <laughs> <laughs> That just shows how long it's been since I've actually hosted the show. I've gotten lazy and just let this you do it. This is how we used to spend the first hour recording old shows. Yeah. Just screwing up. Yeah. So anyways, <laughs> episode 11 of The Lock Up. I'm your host, Junior Ruiz, alongside my co-host. Big B. Brian Adams. And joining us once again this week are uh, one of our seven fans, Chris The Book Bookout. What's up? If you hesitate to say that, you're like... I forgot we were still recording. He did. Threw me off from saw that, right? I kind of felt like it was like a silent movie for a second. Yeah. <laughs> he was just nodding, you know, yeah. like I do. Yeah, I All right, we recorded not film. Yeah, yeah, well. yeah. No, no, I don't. See, I oh, never mind. Um, well, man, we've got a lot of stuff to cover. As Let's you can tell, I was up this morning making notes. Yeah, I see as that. You can see, and dude, we got a lot of stuff now. I'm gonna apologize because a lot of it is not like all TNA specific, WWE specific. It's just scattered out from oldest to newest from the last week. So we're gonna start out with uh, WWE being interested in signing some Ring of Honor talent. Really? Yep. Uh, That's interesting. Who? Moose. Wow. Really? Adam Cole. Okay. And Jay Lethal. Really? Yeah, and uh, Jay Lethal's contract's actually expiring pretty soon. Really? Yeah. Um, they said uh, they had an interview with Moose, and he said he had previous tryouts with WWE, but um, he was more of the mind state where that he was just kind of quote unquote comfortable where he already was. So, but I find that interesting. I mean, Jay Lethal has always been an entertaining character. You know who Jay Lethal is? I have no clue. And Brian, you can't not. I don't know anything about. Yeah, him no, I, yeah, I'm aware that I can't not. Well, you did. I, I know I did. I'm just saying. I was just agree- okay. I'm sorry. I should have verbalized my agreement that, yes, he is the talent. feels good to tell him that because he's always telling me. I always. Cannot. Always telling him that. <laughs> I mean, uh, I'm, like I said, we're just skipping here and going through notes. Um, well, before we get too far into it, I would just like to acknowledge the R-Truth. Oh, God. I forgot about that. <laughs> and and he's, he's won again against Barrett. They did a since rematch? Since the pay-per-view. Yeah. yeah. I told you, eventually they're going to have to do something with R-Truth. Besides firing, like you said. Yeah, the, but <laughs> using the Barry Wade Barrett, apparently. Yeah. yeah. I never was a fan of Wade Barrett anyway. No. Uh, no. Right. Ba, 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 boo. I don't know about all that. Well, they're saying that it's supposed to bring the, uh, the Bad News gimmick back. It's supposed yeah. to be the Bad News, the uh, King Bad News Barrett or something, instead of just King well, Barrett. No, I, I liked the whole, I've got some bad at, news. At first it was annoying, but it, it grew. You know, like it, it became yeah. one of those things. Wade Barrett, eventually, he's going to be one of the guys sitting out there like JR and Lawler and stuff like that. Just commentary. You think so? I got some commentary news coming up later. So, uh, right now, it seems that TNA is losing a lot of their wrestlers. Yeah, everybody's jumping ship. Pretty much. Gunner's done with TNA. Uh, it was the company's choice. Uh, Low key quit. Uh, Samuel Shaw is gone as well. Wow. And, uh, well,. Gunner and Samuel Shaw are gone due to quote unquote having no creative for them. I, yeah, I read about that. Um, God, I mean, there's other guys. So low key took off, huh? Any yeah. uh, ideas where he may land? He was in WWE very, very briefly in the uh, early NXT days. Uh, he was uh, Caval. He did pretty good, but for some reason, I guess there was just nothing there. I wonder left. if we'll go to Lucha. Uh, go to the know. underground. Um, also, after uh, this past week's anniversary, James Storm, Austin Aries, and Magnus are all done with TNA. Really? Yep. What? Mm-hmm. But uh, Magnus says uh, he hasn't signed a contract, but he's agreed to work the first set of tapings for Global Force. Wow. Yeah. I think Austin Aries could probably end up in WWE, couldn't he? I could he's see that. He's got enough of a following, I think. I thought there. Austin Aries was in uh, Ring of Honor. No, he's in TNA. I'm confused. Do you know who Austin Aries is? I guess I don't. Short guy, usually in the main event, got really thick sideburns. Yeah. He was in trouble with TNA, I believe, last year because uh, I guess Christy Hemme screwed up his intro and he got mad and backed her into a uh, corner 
and like jumped on the turnbuckle and like thrusted his crotch in her face. Nice. And she threatened us and she tried to sue TNA over huh. it. So he was in a lot of trouble for All that. Right, well, but then he went on Twitter and started talking smack about it. Continue. Like making fun of the situation. Anyways, remember Caitlyn, right? Yes. WWE, her and her husband opened up a Boca Nutrition and Smoothie Bar. Okay. So congrats to them on their new business. Right on. Right. Dude, what the hell's up with your girl, China? <laughs> I don't know what's up with China. Like, Except, these actually, never mind, weird, I can't even say that. Weird so. YouTube videos she's been posting. You know, last week we oh, said Oh, yeah, about trying to get in uh, to the, get hall back of fame. the game for the Hall of Fame. Yeah, um, but like last week we said she uh, she posted, or posed in front of the WWE logo or whatever. She posted a new video. Yeah. And in it she's asking for a meeting with Triple H and Vince so they can bury the hatchet. Yeah, that's not going to happen. No, I don't think so either. I, I feel like when it comes to that bury, burying the hatchet stuff, that's usually something that Triple H think, like initiates. Yeah. And, uh, I, yeah. Wasn't China in the news recently for like accusing the Xbox of raping her or something? Yeah, it was, yes. um, she yeah. was on a radio show and she was saying that, uh, she, that he was raping her, like she would, he would slip drugs in her drinks and stuff, so he heard it and he called in while she was there and they were arguing on the radio yeah, show. I think we talked about that last yeah. week. Yeah, we did. She yeah. wasn't around Bill Cosby that same time, was she? Wow. <laughs> yeah. um, TNA lost their international TV partnership in Australia as of uh, June 27th, so that really? kind of sucks for them. Man, TNA's just going down. Man, you ain't kidding. Um, one thing uh, we actually just watched before we started recording, Kimbo Slice versus Ken Shamrock. Yeah, that was You watched amazing. the match, right? Yeah, that was amazing. I really thought, man, when he got that rear naked choke sunk in, I thought Kim was done. But for him to turn around and give him that. The two, the two punch wallop. Man, that and then nasty he split gash, him, man. man. He Whew. split him hard. The thing, I've seen a lot of people online talking about how it looked fixed. Cause, yeah. yeah, I was going to get into that. Yeah, they, yeah, a lot of people said that they think that fight was fixed. And oh, Joe really? Rogan even went online and started tearing that fight a new one. Who? Joe Rogan. Oh, really? Yeah. Because you can't say somebody like Ken Shamrock doesn't know how to walk in. A- yeah, no, seriously. <laughs> Sorry for the... That's all right. I, I, whatever, man. I'll catch it. Um, I'll yeah. catch it in post. <laughs> Air quotes, post. Yeah, and then they were saying that it was too much of a wrestling match with all the, the holds. Uh-huh. And they were in the... Uh, like, remember the beginning of the match where they were kind of doing the lock... Yeah, no, totally. No like, pun intended, the lock-up. Right. <laughs> and they were, like, kind of like, you know... But they were in a position... I forgot what the position is called, but kind of like where they were whispering back and forth to each other. Right, right. That, so there was a lot of that. that well, that's what they think. Nobody knows for sure. But that gash on Shamrock. That gash, the, the, you can't fake that, man. Uh, Kimbo Slice was razor blade. That looks sick. <laughs> <laughs> um, two more deaths in the wrestling uh, industry this week. Cora Combs, at 92, she died on June 21st. She died of pneumonia. Um, she was uh, the last of the Billy Wolf Troop in the heyday of women's pro wrestling, and she was du- inducted into the Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame in Amsterdam, New York, in 2007. Now, when I read that, dude, I had no idea there was an Amsterdam, Amsterdam New, New York. York. Yeah, neither did I. Did you know that? No. You said Amsterdam. I was like, man, they get yeah. high end inducted wrestlers. I was like, wow. Um, the other death uh, was Nature Boy Buddy Landell. Died at 53 on uh, Monday, June 22nd. He was in a car accident, and he went home and then afterwards, and then uh, they found him at home unresponsive. He wrestled in WCW, Mid-Atlantic, Smoky Mountain, and others. Uh, he was actually hired in 95 in WWE, but he suffered a bad knee injury just days after being hired. Yeah, that's a bummer, man. Yeah, that's got to suck. That's got to suck bad, so... Catch your uh, break, and then well, they always catch say, a break. Yeah, well, they say death comes in threes, and Dusty died, what, a week and a half ago now? Yeah. Maybe two weeks? Yeah, totally. So, I mean, it sucks. Um... That's pretty bad. That's, yeah, no good. No bounce. What you got next? I want to talk about Barack Lesnar. Barack Lesnar. This past Monday night on Raw. The Beast Incarnate. Brock Lesnar turns babyface? Is that possible? A handshake and a noogie? And you're not going to tell uh, dude, me? Dude, that was hilarious. That, that was hilarious, man. That's babyface stuff. Michael Cole looked so uncomfortable. Man, I don't know if that was babyface. That was kind of... Shaking hands, doing the noogie, and then going after the quote-unquote top heel in the company. Yeah, I guess. That's, that's got to be babyface. And he's taking out... He's, well, he's trying to go after Kane and, you know, j and Security. That's, that, that, that screams babyface to me. Well, he's pretty much been the same character the entire time he's been wrestling, so... Right. Maybe it's due for a change. Just, yeah. So, much I like mean, John Cena. 
we won't get into that. But we don't uh, have time for that. It was now my my pros and cons with it. My cons is, dude, he's Brock Lesnar. You gonna try to he's tell me Brock Lesnar? You gonna try to tell me that it just took dress pants Kane, Joey Mercury, and Seth Rollins to take him down? That's something where like. I don't think he should have went down that easy. You forgot about Jamie Noble. No, Jamie Na- Jamie Noble got taken down. Oh, yeah, I know, but he was still there. Yeah, he didn't count. I'm not counting. I mean, he could have been the distraction. You but know? I mean, like... Maybe Brock spent all his brute force taking out Noble into that barricade, and then he was just... Spent. You know that was legit, right? Yeah. Yeah, that was a legit... Noble's got three broken ribs. Seriously? Yeah. Dude, it looked brutal. Yeah, he's out with three broken ribs. They said that after that happened, if you notice, the camera never went back on Jamie Noble. Because they were stretching him out. Nice. Yeah. So, you got Brock as a face, in my opinion, at least. Um, They're probably going to destroy him like they did Big Show, making Big Show a joke. Who, Brock Lesnar? Yeah. No, they will not. No, no way, no how. There's too much money invested in Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar's too much of a name. He Um, won't get that belt back. He won't. You don't think Brock will get it back? No. Um, Speaking back and forth here, WWE and TNA News... At the same time, Dolph Ziggler, all week has been re- uh, there have been reports that he's going to TNA, that he's interested in TNA. Why would he go to TNA? Why? Like, from what you just told me, and from what I witnessed in this last week's TNA, they are apparently dying and desperate. Because you had Vader, you had, uh, you've had matches you've never seen before, you even had... It's one of the worst five minutes of wrestling all week in Jeff Jarrett and his wife in the middle of the ring. I was getting to that. So, obviously they're desperate. Well, those were rumors that have been going around. Um, the truth has finally come out. Uh, he re-signed a new multi-year WWE deal. Yeah. Smart man. Um, more injuries. Eric Rowan, your boy. Yeah, yeah. He's out. Like He got injured with a, uh, an el- a torn bicep injury but they thought it was a small like elbow injury so he wrestled the next night and it turns out no it's a torn bicep if he doesn't need surgery he's gonna be out for four months wow if he needs surgery a lot longer well that i guess so much for that that reforming of their tag team huh yeah but you can't talk about a wwe injury without mentioning tyson kidd yeah well, who it turns out tyson his kidd. surgery is the same kind of surgery that it's a neck surgery that steve austin Chris Benoit and Edgehead. That's how serious the injury is. Wow. And they said he's out indefinitely at least 14 months. Man, that's really, you know, that's a bummer for him because he was coming back on an injury Mm -hmm. and you really felt like he was just going to be a valet to Natalia. And then they put him in this excellent, excellent tag team with Cesaro. And I I felt like it elevated both of those guys. And now that's that's a bummer, man. It is. It really is. So now the question remains is, what are they going to do with Cesaro now? Because it seemed like he was just floating around, you know, trying to find a niche. And then the, the team up with Tyson Kidd elevated them both, which is what they both needed. Yeah, absolutely. You know, they worked off of each and other they very gelled, well. It, it, yes. It totally gelled this tag team. Mm-hmm. And now, now what? Yeah, I know. Who knows, man? Maybe he could team up with the, the Uso. It's funny you mentioned that. Because Jimmy Uso is on commentary for the foreseeable future. Oh, really? On SmackDown. Yeah, and, he was uh, on, he was SmackDown on and main event. Yeah. yeah, because Brian Saxton is quote unquote busy with tough enough duties. Uh huh. So, I mean, he needs something to do while nice. his brother's gone. Hey, man, he worked last night on SmackDown. I dug it. Oh, yeah? It was different. Like, it was different. It I wasn't really... Booker T different, was no, it? No, okay. not Booker T different. No, no. Shucky Ducky Quack no, Quack. No, no. <laughs> he was just, you know, he's got a good personality, man. Yeah. And he was funny, and he was himself, and it worked. It was better than Brian Saxon. That's all I gotta say. Seth Rollins' official finishing move is now the pedigree. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about that, man. I kind of like the curb stamp stuff. Why did they do it with the curb stomp? And I just unsa- unsafe in the world of professional wrestling. Man, get into the wrestling like, ring. That's one of those unsafe. things. So it's out there with Tombstone now. Yeah, it's right. one of those things where it was like one of those. Uh, I mean, like any move that you do improperly could probably cause a concussion. But that was one of those ones that, like, any like, it's a direct hit to the head. You know, so they're trying to do away with anything like that. Um, 
for you, your boy Matt Hardy. Him and uh, his wife, Reb- Rebby Hardy? Rebby Scott? Yeah, well, Hardy. Hardy. Uh-huh. Uh, they welcomed their first child into the world. Sweet. You're going to be the godfather? Oh, I already am. He already told me about it. He also had a sweet <laughs> match against Kurt Angle. Yeah. Oh, yeah. On TNA. Yeah. Dude, I thought it was so pimp how he introduced the birth of his son online. Like, he posted a photo of uh, his son's, like, the f- uh, footprints. He's like now uh, on his making his way to the ring, weighing eight pounds to six ounces. I was like, man, that's real cool. Nice. You know, so your boy, our boy, Darren Young, got a lot to celebrate this week. You know. Oh yeah, yeah. But one thing, he's actually uh, he feels disrespected by the company. Really? You know that new WWE Network show, show Swerved? Yeah. There's uh, they did a clip with him and his boyfriend, and they blurred out his boyfriend's face. So he feels very disrespected about that because they didn't blur it out the first time they showed him uh, and then one of the other shows. Really? Yeah. He's like, why would you do huh. that? Yeah, that doesn't make sense unless he, like, you know, didn't sign off on it. Right. But to blur it on one and not the other? Yeah, that doesn't make sense to me at all. Your, uh... Vince is a racist. Your old school crush. I remember we were talking about, like, some of the hottest divas out there. Yeah. And uh, the one you said was your top, top, top one is in trouble with the law. Who? Nicole Bass. <laughs> look yeah. at the look he's giving me. <laughs> yeah, well, seriously, like, I was like, what? Do you remember Nicole Bass? Yeah, I do. I yeah. saw that, too. She's in trouble with the law. That, man, that was scary. I don't know if you've ever saw Nicole Bass. Oh, yeah, I know she, she had the, man, the one eye that was like, uh, well, she was arrested for shoplifting over $1,000 from a stop and shop in Queens. That's the kind of woman that, like, makes $1, testicles. $1,000 from stop and shop. Creep yeah, right? What the hell did she get? It gets worse. Here, here, here. <laughs> She had twelve hundred and thirty six dollars in food. Where? How do you shoplift twelve hundred and thirty six dollars in food? I don't know, man. That's a couple. And then expect not to get caught. Unless that's like some, you know, like she buying some big steaks. Like, are you like putting all of this in a cart and trying to just take all the carts out and hope nobody's gonna see you? And she she had been relying on how big she is. She intimidated. Right. Right. And then she had one hundred and fifty nine dollars. I paid for this. She had $159 in uh, health and beauty products as well. Wow. It's like... Probably, probably take a lot more than that for her, I would imagine. <laughs> a lot more. It's not like the price. It should have been reversed. A gallon of tequila. Um, well, she cut a one a deal uh, of one-day counseling and stay out of trouble for... Le- legal trouble for six months and the case will be dropped. Wow. If only it was that simple, yeah, right? Yeah, With everything. Right. So, um... I, what I thought was funny when that story came out, they were like, oh, she's her and Emma... It's like, dude, Emma stole like a cell phone case. Yeah. Whatever. Iron Sheik. Oh, what did my boy do now? Nothing. His book was canceled with no reason given. What? Yeah. He had a book coming out and they just canceled it. Man, that's lame. Um, He's interesting, dude. He's have you been, did you watch the uh, the new Tough Enough premiere? No, I have not watched Tough Enough. Neither have <laughs> I, but they've already... <laughs> Sorry about Come that. Come on, man. Didn't the <laughs> right? <laughs> No, what's wrong with you? Oh, he, had um, to get his, he had to get his two cents in there somehow, yeah. right? Yeah. She hasn't um, talked to us, so I'll just sit over here and make random noises. <laughs> <laughs> Better than the noises he's been making. Um, they've had their first elimination already. Oh, yeah. the first episode. Wow. I didn't think they were going that fast. Uh, a guy named Hank Avery was eliminated. It's, it's, it's only been on one episode? Yeah, I believe so. Well, they've been like just... Either one or two episodes. They've been, you know, just... Uh, promoting the crap out of it. Yeah. Just one episode. All right, so go and do it now because you brought it up a few times. Jeff Jarrett was on Impact Wrestling this week, or last week, rocking the Global Force Wrestling t-shirt. Um, he announced that he was also competing in the King of the Mountain match, mm-hmm. which he was really looking forward to. Um, he looks good, man. He's in good shape. Yeah. His wife could have shut up. It was really kind of annoying to listen to her talk. Yeah. Well, Karen, Jared, yeah. whatever it was. You know, it's yeah. Kurt Angle's ex-wife. Uh, really? You didn't know that? No. Yeah. Remember that? That's, well, I don't think you were watching, but they had a storyline where she was leaving Kurt Angle and she was getting with Jeff Jarrett, and it turned out that was real life. Wow. Yeah, they did like a Matt Hardy Edge thing with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and they actually did get together for real. Um, people are like running rapping about why Jeff Jarrett is there. Uh, some people say that it's leading up to a TNA Hall of Fame induction. It's like, well, does, in my opinion, does TNA even really need a Hall of Fame? Well, yeah, like, I don't, like, I don't think so. Would you be like, hey, I'm part of the TNA Hall of Fame? Yeah, I wouldn't. That's something you know? to worry about. Especially when it goes out of business here. So. Yeah, right. Well, 
Um, I feel like part of that is, I mean, he Global Force Wrestling, Global Force Wrestling, Global Force Wrestling. Yeah. When he was on, I feel like he's done a lot of talk about how he wants to, like, do cross promotion things. Mm-hmm. So I think that's probably what it is, and it's probably a smart thing for TNA to embrace because they need something, man. Yeah. Bring back Vader. He finally uh, for a match. He he discussed it. how that came about. And uh, he was saying that he was on a plane and he got a, uh, a message from, you know, TNA saying, hey, we, you know, we've got a proposition we want you to hear, you know, we want you to come down, blah, blah, blah. But he didn't respond right away. And then they said that uh, they mentioned the King of the Mountain and that's what got his attention. Yeah, he went through it. He went that whole spiel in the ring. Yeah. So I was like, oh, okay, interesting. But uh, some people... Like the have, match he created. And- yeah. Yeah, um, Derek's still blah. busting guitars on people's heads. No, that'd be cool though. Yeah. Um, well, the main one of the Power bigger guitars. one of the bigger rumors going around was that uh, the reason he's there is because he's actually in talks with Destination America to take over TNA and rebrand it Global Force Wrestling. Really? Yeah. Wow. So TNA might just be gone. It's a rumor. Well, remember, he's the guy who created TNA. Yeah, that's kind of funny that it's his company. He leaves it. Comes back five years later, seven years later, however long it was. I think it's been five. Might have been seven. I don't know. And, and takes it over on his own. That would be kind of weird. But hey, I'm for it. Because there ain't much really going on there that I care for. I mean, what else is there? An invasion angle? That's what, that's all I can see. That I could see, storyline-wise, would be Global Force Wrestling invades TNA, and then they take it over. And it, you know that's how you brand it, storyline-wise, as Global Force instead of a TNA. You know? But who knows with all these guys jumping ship? Yeah, you know, and it's funny because a lot of them that left have signed with Global Force, so it's like, but you're kind of you know, coming back to the same thing. It would be really smart for Destination XL to get, dude. That's <laughs> the big guy store. Son of a B, man. That's the yeah. Okay, Destination America. I don't know why. Like every time Destination XL immediately pops in my brain, Destination America needs to get New Japan. Yeah, because, dude. There's a lot of great talent in New Japan. I haven't seen any New Japan promotions, but there's a lot of dudes on Ring of Honor. You know, Bullet Club is a big deal. One thing yeah. I didn't know, I just like I, I don't have it in my notes, but one thing I just read this morning, I really didn't know. Finn Balor, did you know he led Bullet Club? No. Yeah, neither did I. When he was Prince, whatever. Prince Devitt. Yeah, I didn't know that. No, was not aware. Just a side note. So Bret Hart. <sighs> Good old Bret Hart. Hate on Samoa Joe. Besides that. What did you do? Like, what did you, y- you wish. I mean, you know, Bret, you know, Bret is wrestling, pretty much. And Brett. you kind of take what he says. <laughs> Bret the sh- man fart. Sorry, I, just, I had to. Okay. Um, <laughs> you, 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 in the world? Yeah. yeah. You take what he says. I had to share that. With consideration because of who he is and the reputation and everything and what he knows. Yeah. But it's like sometimes you're like, "Eh, you know what, Brett, you just, sometimes I think you just don't know when to stop. That's kind of like everything with Hulk Hogan. Yeah, yeah. So the the newest thing that Bret Hart has said is that uh, he believes Daniel Bryan's done with wrestling. Because he said the concussion that Bryan's going through in the injury is the same thing that he went through when Goldberg gave him that concussion. So he's like, the symptoms are the same. He's been talking to Bryan, and he's just like, that. Bryan hasn't come to the realization that he's done. And Brett's like, as far as I'm, as far as I'm concerned, I, I believe he's done. There's no way he's gonna be able to come back from that. Okay, so you're angry with Brett because he has an opinion that no. you don't agree with. No, I, I'm not saying I don't agree with it. I'm not saying I don't agree with it. I'm just stating that that's what Brett said. Oh, but you just said he needs to learn when to shut up. Did I say that? Well, kind I of. I apologize. Well, that's not how I meant. It. It's I'm not. I mean, I, you didn't say that verbatim. Right. But pretty much. It's just one of those things where I feel that. It's like, well, I don't know how to word it. What's that? (laughs) Wait it out and see. Yeah, it's just like, well, like, why are you, like, he's just being super negative. Like, no, this is what's going to happen. This is what's going to happen. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm a Bret Hart fan. He's one of my top five. But it's it's one of those things where it's like, man, you know, like, I think Brian should be the one to come, be the one to come out and say something like that. Not just, you know, Bret Hart's like, oh, he's not going to wrestle. Like, how much you got to do? Yeah. With looking at the future I don't see how, if he's not back within the next six months, mm-hmm. how he'll be relevant at all. Because there are going to be guys that are just going to outshine him. Oh, yeah. I mean, Speaking of not being relevant, another side note. 
Chicago has lost one. Woohoo! <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, CM Punk has yeah, moved out of Chicago. Good riddance. It's like, yeah. whatever. People are saying he was just sticking around until after the NHL season was done, you know, until the finals were done. Yeah. And then he moves closer to Milwaukee. I, I can understand you moving closer to where your training is. It makes sense. You know, it does make sense, but it's just like, well, just you, you, you quote unquote represent Chicago. I still you think are he's Chicago. A well, yeah. But. I still think he's a D bag. So let him go to the land of cheese where he belongs. Cheese. Change his name to MM Punk, Milwaukee Made Punk. <laughs> <laughs> um, NXT talent, Camel Dickinson. Sound familiar to you? Absolutely not. Me neither. Uh, well, he was released due to concussion-related issues uh, that he actually previously suffered in Ring of Honor. Okay. Well, I don't, I don't who know who is. that is. So, um, You mentioned it on Facebook yesterday. Your boy, Hernandez. Uh, they said he's done with Lucha Underground. He went back to TNA. Because the way that it's, it's, it's stationed, you can't do... One, some of those companies, you can cross-promote with the wrestlers, but some you can. Lucha, Ground, Lucha Underground and TNA are not two companies that you can go back and forth on. That's got to be a TNA thing because there are many dudes in Lucha that are in other promotions. Prince Puma, the champion of Lucha Underground, wrestles in... in AAA, right? Yeah, but under a different name. Okay. So, I mean, I don't... That's got to be a TNA thing. Bruno San Martino is in the hospital for like a month, dude. Yeah. Require surgery on his back. Uh, that sucks. That's no good. Hopefully he doesn't pass. That's a rough surgery we have for such an old man. Yeah. My boy, Sabu. Sabu. Took a shot at, uh, yeah, there you go. If you guys couldn't see that, uh, Brian's doing the, uh, the Sabu pose that everybody knows and loves. But uh, he took a shot at Big Show. Really? Yeah, yeah on Twitter. Uh, it says, uh, the ECW original Sabu took a shot at WWE star Big Show when he posted the following. I really liked wrestling dudes way bigger than me. The bigger they are, the louder they stooge you off to Vin, LOL. So I don't know, like, what prompted him to just come out and say that. You know, I, I don't see him just being like, hey, you know, one day I'm just going to go ahead and just talk about Is Big he show. retired? Who? Sabu. He's still wrestling, like, indie shows and yeah. stuff like that. Like, he takes bookings and stuff, yeah. you know. Um, that guy. Yeah, he's great. That's why they, why I'm not he, even why tell that story on the air. Why they ever let go? I, I can't. There's something I want to say, but I can't say it on the air. Right on. I think I told you, though. What happened at the squared circle? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so, I mentioned earlier all these names leaving TNA, but they got some returns lately. Bully Ray came back. That's awesome. And so did uh, Dixie Carter. Yeah, but is Bully Ray back back? Well, he's back as the new authority figure, quote unquote. Oh. So oh, it looks like he'll be back for a little way. Yeah, little seriously. Way. And then uh, Dixie Carter came back as a baby face. So, big whoop. Nobody gives a damn. I hope eventually they pull Dudley's back. You know, that, that was a missed opportunity after the Royal Rumble, man. It really it was. It was, yeah. Um, I felt you'd bring the Dudleys in and have them help the tag division. You know, seriously, dude. Imagine if the Dudleys were in that WrestleMania match. That'd have been freaking awesome. And finally, we end this week with the family of Matt Osborne. Do you remember who that is? No. Doink the clown. Okay. Suing WWE. Really? Yeah. Why? They blame him for his death. They blame WWE for his death because and of uh, all the concussions and everything he suffered. That because he overdosed on painkillers. So they blame, well, if WWE had safer work, working practices, you know, yada, 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 that wouldn't happen. So they're Well, maybe him. he should have been a wrestler. And WWE's lawyer countered with, we get lawsuits like this all the time. They just want money. They're not getting it. Good luck. <coughs> Got to time that stuff, man. <laughs> hey, he's a pro. He knows. Yeah. I mean, that's what I got as a lot of randomness there. Maybe, right not, maybe next, uh, next episode I'll try to... Yeah, I'm got, still getting back in the groove, man. I got my rust. I got nothing to add. It was good stuff, man. It was uh, good stuff. Uh, rusty. I got nothing to add. Uh, you know, just what I added. The TNA stuff. I, yeah, I actually watched TNA. Whoa. And this was an episode that we talked about TNA a lot more than just, oh, yeah, so this week TNA sucks. Yeah. Still. You're going to start getting into TNA as the ship sinks. Yeah, yeah right? Like, I'm going to start liking it and then it's going to be gone. You know what you guys need to watch? I actually, I'll, I'll try to Lucha bring it next time. Underground. No, 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 it's TNA related. I have a DVD. I have some TNA DVDs. Um, the best of Sting? No, I don't have that one, believe it or not. No. Um, 
The Best of TNA Year One. Dude, that was an awesome DVD. Okay. That was pretty awesome. You should borrow it to me then. I should. I hey, keep forgetting that Ultimate Warrior. I was just gonna say yeah. it's in, the, and I keep for every week I'm like I gotta bring that so we can yeah. watch it, and I keep forgetting to bring it. I gotta see that, dude. It's you gotta see the self destruction of the Ultimate Warrior. Mm-hmm. It's the DVD that they WWE put out uh, in the early 2000s, just bashing, making Warrior look like the biggest idiot on the face of the planet. Have you ever watched his videos that he puts out? Yeah, man, he's kind of bad, crazy too. Yeah, he used to be. Yeah, yeah he used to be. <laughs> But you know, like we've we've discussed when we talk about the uh, last time when we talk about Dusty Rhodes, how the Ultimate Warrior thing was just so eerie, and everything, how all that went down. It's just yeah, how it all played out was extremely like just creepy. You know all about that, right? Uh, somewhat. Well, yeah, like how he ma- he makes up with Vince and and with due to Triple H's influence. Yeah. They induct him into the Hall of Fame. That following Monday night, he goes out and Raw first time he's been on Raw in what 20 years something like that and he gives this speech about how like you know every man yada yada and it's the fans that make them immortal and you know as long as they're, they're still the fans that they'll always be remembered and then he was dead the next day it oh, was just really ear like the speech was just like like wow. go, google the speech dude later on yeah. and like if anything foreshadowing something if, yeah, yeah yeah that's exactly like the whole weekend that's seriously. what it was it just cause WWE did um a network documentary with the cameras followed him around that entire weekend like you know outside of the wrestlemania arena everything like him and his family just followed him around and it just seemed like it was one of those like not i don't even want to say a calm before the storm kind of thing but just like he just knew you know like he was just there to make peace with everything you know and just settle it was really o- ominous yeah it's for, yeah that's a great word for it very so uh, that, that's it for this week. That's that's all I got for lockup. Um, Take us out, sir. Next week there is no lockup due to the Fourth of July weekend. Um, so you know, obviously, we'll see you in two weeks. Uh, enjoy your holiday. Please be safe. Don't be an idiot and hold M80s in your hand because, believe it or not, people still do that. Um, and then you're on the news and you screwed up for everybody else. And be Good sure call. to blare "Real American" real loud on Fourth of July. Yep. Get your Kenny Powers on. <laughs> Run around your yard wrapped in an American flag. Not Boy. the Confederate one. Yeah, not the Confederate. The one. American they'll one. Ban, We're not. Just... They'll ban you from your neighborhood. Yeah. <laughs> or the uh, the d- and butt <laughs> ISIS flag. Nice. Um, you know, I'm, I'm gonna have to beep that out now. Yeah. It's all good. Um. Well, is d- and butt are those those aren't swear words? Well, d- it's not a swear word. Here we go again. <laughs> You fine, bleep it all out. I mean, there is a pussy cat. Or a pussy wibble. Now you're just now you're just reaching. I know. <laughs> I just did reaching. on purpose. Brian, tell them about the petition. JDF versus CM Punk in the UFC, change.org. Go down in the bottom of the description, click the link, sign it, take twenty seconds, do us a favor. Share it as well. Share. I mean, if you're share, not going to sign, share, share. share it. Somebody else will probably sign it. You, I'm sure you've got friends. Because we all want to see CM Punk get B slapped by JDF. Word. And you're lucky we can't say who likes this video because then we check for a name on the petition. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? You can see. Can you? Yes. As long as they, because you, know, you know how they have to leave a comment of why they're signing it? You don't have to. It's optional. Well, Anybody who does, you can see who it is. Oh, nice. I saw it the other day. I was like, no way. Right on. So, um. And then join us back here later on the week for ah, breaking the fourth wall. What kind of sound effect was that? I don't know. It just kind of weirdly happened. That's a pretty cruddy break. It was, it was, <laughs> yeah. Um, follow us on Twitter at Comics Remixed, at The Spinner Rack, or on Facebook, YouTube. Check out Alex's Toy Reviews, Remixed Reviews. On YouTube, look them up under Shy Town Cylon. I'm Battlestar Galactica for those that don't know. Um, he just posted a new one this uh, this past week about uh, his experience at last week's BotCon. So enjoy. Let us know what you think. Like How the video. Was Jr.? I didn't go. I know. Should I throw it out there? Nice. It's not like I was hurting. He's just it. like rubbing <laughs> some salt in the wound. No, not really. All right. Well, we'll see you next week or Later. two weeks. Peace.